a small mouth. <laughs> what the? On my little wacky Cinco. <laughs> he ran out with it, didn't he? Oh, come on. You ain't that big. Hold on a minute. Uh oh, gotcha. <laughs> Slipping out of my hands. Oh, little male fell right back in the water. <laughs> you know, folks, today we're back at Apache Lake, but we're throwing something that I've always tried to teach a lot of guys, a lot of people in uh, in classes and stuff. It's one of my favorite rigs. You know, and it's this time of year during the during the spawn and just before they're getting ready to spawn, cold water, I love to throw a wacky Senko. And uh, <clears throat> my favorite color has got to be the 330, which is a crawdad type color with, uh, with a little copper flake in it. Some guys like the 301 with the purple, and that's good too. Find one that you like, a color you got a lot of confidence in. And that's basically the rig right there. And you use a, a wacky tool to put a little O-ring on there and then you just put your little uh, hook right there, right underneath the plastic. And I'll tell you something else too. It saves a lot of baits. So you'll get a lot of fish on it without having to change baits a lot of times. So that's really nice. I use a one-aught or a two-aught owner wacky style hook and this is why i like the wacky style hook if you take a good look at it right there it's got the little brush guard on it now it's not much but it's just enough to roll it over some rocks when you're pulling it real slow but that's that's the perfect rig there for me that's what i like this time of year i'll throw it on a 12 pound liter with white nanofill line made made by berkeley this white nanofill line is really great for this type of rig. And the reason why I like it is because I just, I can watch the line. I can see what it's doing. I have to, we're throwing these weightless. You have to let the line lay on top of the water. And so you're watching your line. And as your bait's kind of falling, it's kind of going out slow. And sometimes you'll see the twitch. And it's just like bobber fish. It's so much fun. So that's why I like to use this kind of line. You can use any kind of line you want, but you got to use some kind of braid to uh, fluorocarbon. And the reason why I say that, you get a better cast. And uh, one of the reasons I like the Nanofill on, on this particular rig is because it's neutral buoyancy. And with, with that, with saying that, it's, uh, it'll, it'll just follow the bait down. It won't sink the bait, it won't float the bait. The line does exactly what, what's happening to it. So basically it'll, it'll not hamper the action of the bait whatsoever. So, and I'll let it fall on the bottom. And once it falls on the bottom, if I don't get bit, I'll just start dragging it on the bottom real slow. Now I'll fish this bait from zero to probably 15 foot of water weightless. So, and when you know they're moving up shallow, you're hoping to catch a few of them big females. You'll find areas, you know, you know they're up on the flat spawning. And, uh, and we did a show where, where, you know, you could get up there and catch them with uh, the stick go and things like that real shallow catch those buck bass, but you know, I like to pull out a little bit when I'm doing this kind of fishing and uh, just see if I can get a few of them big, big fish to hit. So <clears throat> there's times they're on it. We're gonna try it today. Got him. Oh, it's a little bit better fish now. Little largemouth bass. You don't like that. <laughs> oh, come on, buddy. Come on. I'll let you go. I'll let you go. Come on. One thing about throwing this bait is you will catch some fun quality fish. Yeah, nice little bass. Boy, he's got some shoulders on him for the size of him. Threw up on that rock and he ticked it right there off that rock. I'm gonna back off a little bit. You know, a lot of times what you're looking for trying to catch some of the bigger fish when they're spawning is, I, I look for places where that, where that big fish will look, kind of lay up and hide from everything else going on. So I'll see these big boulders and stuff. I'll throw by them where they have a little shade hide up underneath or something and just drag it out. Now, one thing that's real important when you're throwing this bait is I'm letting, I'm letting line out as I'm, as I'm backing up a little bit. 
so the bait will fall to the bottom. And once it falls to the bottom and nothing's picked it up, then what I do is instead of just grabbing the reel and actually reeling the bait in like this, use your rod. Your rod it will tell you everything going on. So what I do is I pick up the slack on my line and then I sweep the rod tip. And boy, I can feel the bottom so good. Uh, it's, you know, you can just feel it. But I sweep the rod tip and then I let the line lay back on top of the water while I pick up the slack. But a lot of times what ends up happening is when you're pulling it, it's been sitting there, they're looking at it. When you go to pull it, you'll feel the tick. You'll feel them actually suck it in. With sweeping the rod, you can feel everything through your rod. You can feel everything through that line. That Nanofill has no stretch. I'm using a fluorocarbon leader. It's a 12 pound leader, no stretch. So I can feel that thing on the bottom real good. And the ticket is, the key is, is to be sure that you're dragging it on the bottom, not lifting it up and having it do this kind of thing in the water. When you pull that bait across, that's why it's got the brush guard on the hook. That's why I like it so much. I'm coming over top of the rocks real easy. If you feel yourself kind of coming over top of the rock and it's a little bit bigger, you can kind of shake the rod tip over it and it looks like a little crawdad. Not too hard, just enough, you know? Don't get bit, halfway back to the boat, you pick it up, you reel it, throw it back out there again. Throw it in a little different area. Let it fall. There's times you'll throw it out there, they'll be so aggressive, your line will just start taking off. And then there's other times you have to let it fall and just, just sweep the rod tip. Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. No, 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 no. They'll break you off in that. No, 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 no. That's like a saw. There we go, got it loose. I just kind of let it run a little bit there. Come on. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Threw right up in those weeds. Oh. <laughs> Keep us away from these rocks a little bit. Man, I had that fish good. It wasn't come up, going anywhere. That is so much fun when you throw it back there in the little brush pile there and they come out and smash it. How much fun is that? Yeah. <laughs> Don't see go bass. <laughs> Oh, he was eating my lunch in there. I should have tightened my drag down. <laughs> that was fun. These fish get back in these coves and they'll move up in there. And boy, this little natural bait gets it done now. They like it. And I'm just throwing it right up there alongside there. You know, we're just kind of mulling around looking for, looking for some of these fish that might bite, some of these bigger fish. I see them roaming around in here. He didn't go. We got it. Yeah, a little smallmouth bass. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's a nice little smallmouth bass. Sometimes you just got to let them take it. Yeah. Come on, buddy. I know that was good, wasn't it? There we go. Sheesh, they always go to shake their heads when you go to pull them out caught him right in the corner of the mouth. And that's why that little hook is huge. And you wanna make sure that they got the bait. But look, see how the hook has just really got him good. And the way the hook is shaped, it ain't coming out of there. Sometimes you gotta get pliers to get out of there, but there we go, let's see if we can get it. There we go. Beautiful little small mouth. That's a buck bass. Little Seco bass. <laughs> You just never know what you're gonna set the hook on, I'll tell you. But yeah, that's the big key to this kind of hook versus just a regular round hook. If you take a good look at this hook, I love this hook because it's got more of a J type. If you take a good look at it, it, it bends right in here and then it has almost a, crazy how that hook is, but it's perfect. Perfect for this kind of fish and love it. Basically, you just push the bait, push the hook back up underneath the, the plastic rubber instead of pulling on your bait and you will save your bait. So that's really something to remember. Otherwise you'll be tearing your baits. 
we're back in business. Okay, there's my, there's my bait. I see a, a decent sized fish and I'm gonna try to catch it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this canyon craw. We're just kind of out roaming. And the thing is, is you gotta remember, even though I'm Cinco fishing and having fun doing that, man, it's hard, it's so hard to pass up fish like that. I don't wanna pass them up. So I'll uh, try to catch them as I go buy them and then I'll go back to my Cinco. That's the craw right there that I've been using. I used it in Wild West Bass to get second place at Roosevelt. I'm using a Palomar knot, by the way, fluorocarbon line, 17 pound test line on this bait. It doesn't matter the size of the line a lot of times when you're throwing something this big in there anyway. A lot of times they're gonna do everything they can to get it out of there. And I'm gonna hook this up weedless. Cactus Wren, Canyon Crawl right there, ready to go on a big half ounce jig head. Now let's see what happens here. There it goes. I think I got her. She got it in the rock on me. Oh, look at that. Look at that fish, folks. <laughs> that is the big one that I was trying to get right there. Beautiful fish. <laughs> Come on. No, 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 no. Come on now. Yeah! There you have it. <laughs> Look at that beautiful fish, huh? They're moving up. See, baby. Fired that thing up with my canyon craw and I couldn't quite, couldn't quite get her, so I threw back in there just for the last deal there. Sometimes they just don't go, you know? I, we parked here for a little while, looked around. Sometimes they just don't go and uh, decided, well, we'll give it a shot. One more shot with our Wacky Cinco. It works great. I couldn't see it, I just felt her running off with my bait, so that was a lot of fun. Got him. I got him. <laughs> yes, baby. That's how it's done. Oh, that's how it's done. Come on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She went right out there and nailed that bait. Ah. <laughs> Little Cinco Bears, love it, just love it. Apache Lake, you just can't beat this lake. It's a lot of fun to fish. Oh my goodness. Hi, buddy. You thought you were hiding from me? <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Ah, oh, I love this place. I just love fishing. I'll tell you what, this, this little bait right here is, this is the cat's meow when it comes to catching some decent quality fish, you know. It's fun to get up in the shallows and catch all them little buck bass and all that. And we're in the shallows here, but we just went hunting a little bit and came into the back of this cut and it's really shallow back here, but it just so happened we spooked a couple fish. So I just happened to see it run you know, and that's gonna be my tip of the week, folks. My tip of the week is, is anytime you go to an area and you see a lot of fish in the area, you can either try to fish them, and if you're not catching them, then leave the area because you're right on top of them a lot of times. Leave the area, let it rest five, 10 minutes, okay? And then come back in and make long casts. I had to make a long cast to that fish. Just make the long cast. And if you make a long cast, you're not spooking the fish. A lot of times, as soon as your bait hits the water, they're shooting over there. We're in three feet of water. I mean, all around us. But we came back in after seeing those fish. We, we came back through, and I just decided to park the boat and make long casts to it instead of being right on top of it. I see so many fishermen sitting right on top of their fish a lot of times, and I'm talking right on top. 
It's one thing to do it if you got the sun at your back and, and the fish is up looking at you or the fish ain't near as spooky. But when these fish get spooky, there's times I'm standing on my, almost on my trolling motor to, to even see my bait. So you need to think about that the next time you go out. It's a lot of fun though, I'll tell you that. One thing that you can be assured of when the wind's blowing just a little bit like this and you can't really sight fish, the Cinco to me is great, the Wacky Cinco just casting it and bring it in. Hopefully you can bring it over something. But also, these fish won't be as spooky with a little bit of breeze. Sometimes you can get a little closer to them and they won't be as skittish. So having that little ripple on the water sometimes can be your friend. I know there's a lot of guys out there that think that, oh man, I hope the wind blows, you know, to where it, it does make it harder to see the fish, but if you've already got them pinpointed down, you know, uh, in certain areas, It'll actually make the fish less spooky, so so they're actually kind of can be a little bit easier to catch. There's been times I've worked on on slick water for a fish for a long time, and the, the breeze kicks up. I'd be all upset that the breeze kicked up a little bit, but all of a sudden the fish bit. So, you know, it's not such a bad thing all the time. I don't know what he got me into. Oh, that's a good fish now. Oh. <laughs> that was the fish I was looking for, son. That's what I'm talking about. The Seco bass. Look at the size of the monster. Come on. No, no, no. You're done. Play him out with that Taipan rod. <laughs> I don't even know how well I've got that fish hooked, but folks, this is a beautiful fish. Look at that. Oh, five pounder. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's the ones you look for on them wacky Cinco's. Oh my goodness. Come on. Oh yeah. Come on. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, the hook fell right out. Look, that's the female too. Beautiful bass, huh? Beautiful bass. Gotta get a Facebook pic and then we'll release her. Got my Facebook pic, now we're gonna release her real quick. Just took a second. Oh my goodness. These are the kind of fish you come to Apache Lake to catch right here, baby. All right, baby. Bye-bye. Straight down. I'm telling you, folks. <gasps> Those are the kind of fish you catch on them wacky Cinco's in here. Yeah! I'll tell you what. You need to grab some five inch Cinco's. It's a five inch Cinco. Some one aught owner wacky style hooks. Some 12 pound test fluorocarbon line. A good braid called Nanafil, Nanafil in white so you can see the line get ticked. And uh, a medium action Taipan spinning outfit right here. I'll tell you what, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this outfit right here, and you'll catch a lot of fish on it. Trust me, I've got a lot of fish at Roosevelt, Apache, uh, Lake Pleasant, from the end of February all the way through May. So you'll have a lot of fun with this. Get out and try it. Thanks for joining me on the show. Hey, we'll see you next week. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs>